Well, good morning guys. Well, by the time you watch this, it probably won't be morning. But anyway, uh, look at the mud all over the window. Remember the high end, the excavator? I finally got to go out there and diagnose it yesterday. And I didn't make a video. I really intended to make a video. Let me tell you the entire story. So, I headed out there in the morning. I had an international 9900i truck in town here that wouldn't start and it just had bad batteries anyways i finished that job i took off and lanto valley is about an hour a little over an hour drive from here went all the way out there uh, realized for the fitting that i need i didn't have one of those european test fittings couplers so i had a i could check pilot pressure with some bsb pt a run t and a gauge but i couldn't check the axle to see what the EPPR valve was doing, which is the electro uh, pressure, electromagnet uh, pressure, proportioning pressure reducing valve, or whatever the hell they want to call it. Oh shit, it is, whoa, it's slicker than, it's slicker than snot right here. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> it is slick this morning, solid sheet eyes. <clears throat> anyway, I uh, went out there the first time, didn't have the right fitting, basically, <coughs> and I was going to record it. I didn't even get the camera off the dash of my pickup. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I drove all the way back to the hydraulic shop in Klamath Falls. And the GoPro camera was laying right here where, where the rest of the stuff always is. So, I'm going to slow down here because it's not really wanting to stop this morning. And, uh, anyway, I got there, I went in to the hydraulic shop, and I was bullshitting with the owner, and I had the door halfway open, the, the door into his business halfway open and halfway closed. And, uh, I had my body about halfway out the door and halfway in. And anyway, I... Oh, and then this fuel truck, he's going to stop here. The propane truck's going to stop here at the railroad tracks and then cause a car pile up because everybody else is going to slam on the brakes and not be able to stop. Come on, get going. No. Anyway, uh, as I was sitting there talking to him, I heard a door shut. And... I let him finish his conversation kind of there with me and I kind of looked out the deal at the out there in the pier that kind of peeked out around the door there and looked out in the parking lot and there was a guy kind of scammering away out of the parking lot and I didn't really think a whole lot about it you know and and uh, anyway I, I kind of thought it was weird when I went out in the parking lot I was the only vehicle out there so where did the door shut sound come from huh so I got in the service truck and really wasn't paying attention. I was more focused on getting back out the excavator because I was my mind was working and I was trying to think, you know, I think I'm getting real close to figuring out what's going on with this machine. Well, I got out there and as I got stuck and I was gonna grab the video camera to videotape myself pulling myself out with the excavator. And it was gone. That son of a bitch I saw walking off and the door I heard shut was that son of a bitch stealing my fucking camera off the dash of my pickup with all three of my dogs in the cab and hauling ass off out of the parking lot. Ugh, this boils my fucking blood. But uh, anyway, so we went and bought another $400 camera last night. Uh, so we could keep on with the YouTube thing. Uh, so I have a GoPro 7 now. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I told my wife, I said, you ought to just drive around to the pawn shops today and see if you find it at a pawn shop. I'm sure the son bitch probably turned in my camera for some meth. You know, some <coughs> meth money to get his fix for the day. He sure as hell didn't steal it to use it. <coughs> anyway... On a side note, the the uh, that uh, excavator, I've got it figured out. It's the computer, the CPU controller. I I went out there and I took my 
phone since I didn't have my camera anymore and I hung it to the gas shock of the side panel and I zip tied it to it and I put it in record and I had the ammeter and I had the pressure gauge for the EPPR valve on there and the way this excavator works it's it's what they call a negative hydraulic system so what it the way it works is most most variable pumps are stroked on by pilot pressure the more pilot pressure the more the pump stroked on for more flow more pressure on the main pump well on this one they kind of went after cats cat kind of does this too it's called a negative pressure and I'm not talking about vacuum but what they're doing is they'll have on the spool they'll have two sets of pressures on the spool and when you what they're doing is they're dumping pressure on one side so the spool moves the other way but on this excavator the way it works the more current flow the more amperage that you're putting to this valve and the more pilot pressure the less hydraulic flow you have out of the main pump so there's what they call a prolix switch on this thing and this prolix switch if you put it into emergency mode there's a resistor that comes off the battery that gives you're basically bypassing the cpu controller on this excavator and you're running off this resistor and when you put that in emergency mode you're given that valve that changes the pilot pressure a fixed amount of current that doesn't change and i noticed that when you put it in there the pressure stayed constant and the current stayed constant and the excavator worked great in emergency mode but when you put it in normal operation in finishing mode uh, the S mode or any of them it was terrible so I, 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 I videoed it with my phone in in emergency mode and in S mode with the coil plugged in and all that and with the coil plugged in in S mode you're supposed to have like a maximum of 284 psi and like 450 milliamps of amperage going to the coil well I was getting almost 400 psi and almost 600 milliamps of current go flow going to that so what's going on the CPU controller sending way too much current to the valve and the valve is destroking the pump to slow down all the hydraulics and so when you put in emergency mode, you're taking that current flow away from that valve and putting it at a fixed displacement. And so then you're putting your pump at a fixed displacement too, and then everything works great. So I called them this morning and said, you need a computer. It's the computer without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's the computer. So anyways, I'm really happy that I got that figured out. But uh, so anyways guys we're running down here and that's another thing I had footage on the camera of the other part of the clutch pack rebuild on that AC tractor down here in McDowell and that footage is gone now never to be seen again well maybe by that worthless piece of shit but uh, uh, I'm gonna video today and I want to do some explanation on the torque limiter there I think there's a lot of confusion with guys that have been around mechanical clutches for a while. Okay guys, we're back at this AC tractor and I want to explain something. I had a lot of comments and people were, why don't you use the input shaft to line up the clutch? It's not a clutch. How does that clutch release? It is not a clutch. It does not, it's, there's no release, no apply. It, there's no linkage going to this clutch. This is a torque limiter disc is all this is, okay? Let me explain to you how these tractors work. And this tractor was kind of ahead of its time because a lot of the modern tractors are like this and instead of using this torque limiter disc like this that has constant tension on the flywheel a lot of the modern tractors with power shifts use a big rubber coupler on them that takes up the shock load and let me explain to you what that shock loads about okay here let's explain this how the clutch actually works on this tractor when you push on this clutch pedal you're running a valve right here okay You'll see where, see the spring back there that's running into this valve body. That's your clutch. And what you're doing is you're taking your, you're taking the hydraulic oil that is going to this power director clutch pack right here. 
And you're going to either, it depends on whether your range selector is, whether you're in high or low, you're dumping the oil off that. That's all you're doing, okay? So, if we have, and we're dumping all our oil off that, we have to have some way of when that is applied and there's an actual physical connection between the engine and transmission, there has to be some give somewhere, okay? If we don't have any give anywhere and you let that out and it's a straight solid coupling to the engine with nothing to give, you're gonna twist your drive lines in two or tear something up back here. More than likely you're gonna strip the spines on that input shaft or you're gonna tear something up. So that's the whole purpose of this. And especially with the newer tractors with power shifts, they're kind of set up on the same, kind of the same function, but most of them are electric. When you push it, when they push the pedal in, you're actually pushing a micro switch in or a potentiometer, you know, as an inching pedal. And that's a whole other subject. But anyway, on a power shift and the newer tractors, you don't even use that. Most people don't even use this unless they're backing into an implement to hook something up to where they can feather that potentiometer to allow more or less flow of hydraulic fluid to their clutch pack to back in slowly to an implement to hook it up. Most operations on the newer tractors especially, you just start it and you don't push in the clutch. You just put it in forward and then start upshifting or downshifting or whatever. And the whole purpose of that on the newer tractors is so when you just put it in forward and you get that little bit of a you know, there's clutch modulation and everything when you start taking off, but if you didn't have this, you'd be twisting stuff in two and you'd, you'd tear stuff up. This is designed to where there's a certain amount of torque on this up against the flywheel to where it takes that shock load up. And if it exceeds that torque load, it slips a little bit and keeps from tearing stuff up in the tractor. So I hope that helps people understand what this torque limiter does a little better. So, okay, let's move on. Uh, this was the only thing that I did not get. And like I said, I had the whole assembly of this thing videotaped and some dickwad stole my camera off the dash of my service trucks. Well, folks, I first started recording this at about, I don't know, 9.30 this morning. Well, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. I had a call while I just started to chain this up to lift it into the tractor and start going together and uh, had a log truck that was on Mount Hebron and pulling the grade and lost the drive line and luckily it was a pretty simple deal we just had to just time consuming because we're an hour away from anything getting parked so I had to I ran up there he said oh, I got the serial number on the truck I'll, I'll I called Pape and they got the parts and I said, I'm getting the tag number and I'm getting the yoke off. And I'm taking the yoke with me. I'm not doing the serial number thing. I said, that's, a, that's an older truck. And you know, she's, those guys might've swapped rear ends. You don't know what they did. So I'm, no, I'm, I'm gonna come up there and grab the yoke. And I'm sure I'm glad I did because I got to Pape and it's not their fault. They went off the serial number and it was wrong and they didn't have the right one. And so Fleet Pride had it, and then I got back and got the drive, new yoke on the rear end. Didn't screw the drive line up. And anyway, we got it going. I don't want you to come out of there. Is that all the way in? It's kind of... Uh, let's pull it all the way out make sure that we're going all the way in up against that other collar the way we need to be. There we 
go. Okay. Stay in there, you prick. low that way it'll kind of put that back that away make sure this stays where it's supposed to stay in there I thought that was flush with that before it's the only thing that I'm kind of a little bit worried about it's up against that gear, so it can't go any further. I'm gonna let it down a little ways, just make sure that this is going back together. any issues bearing right there really careful Gotta go up a little ways Kind of supporting itself a little bit there. Okay. Make sure we're not damaging our needle bearing or anything. Lucas boy, what are you doing, bud? Okay, are we sagging or are we we're sagging a little bit trouble? A little bit better. Yeah. I think I can probably most of the weights on the shaft now. Oh, don't do that. About my O ring should be like right here, and then there. There's my ports. Okay, let me get a couple 
longer 3 8 bolts or can I just use the bolts that I've got I'm kind of use them for guide studs are they long enough? probably not I got any longer 3 8 bolts over here I was going to get some 3 8 all thread but you know what I forgot huh I forgot huh Daisy so we will improvise me an idea got an idea guys if she's a screwdriver or something and see if we can get a bolt started in it Closer. Well, let me go find some longer 3 8 bolts and use them as guide studs. Okay. Some longer bolts here. not going in. I love it when things do this to you. So I can't get bolt started in it. Yeah, I feel a spine right there or something. Whatever I did there, I don't Whatever I did, I thought I started, but it's not really doing it. There it goes. Popped. There it goes. Whatever we did. We did something right. Hit it with a hammer. I don't want my O-rings to come out of there. I want them to stay put. actually make pretty good handles those are lined up and <sighs> I'm 
Boy, you are being ornery. Really ornery. I took my two guides, <laughs> the two bolts that I went and got over there and took them out and the fucking thing went right in there. I don't know. Hopefully my o-ring stayed in there. And... Okay. So, yeah, I had some pretty cool footage of the grader. The old road grader getting it fired up and getting the clutch in and all that stuff the other day and then uh, somebody stole my camera so cool you know good deal thank you i needed that are you just trying to see what kind of resolve i have you dirty bastard Well, that news for you, partner. I got a lot. I like that old movie. What was that? Uh, what's uh, Clint Eastwood? Heartbreak Ridge. And he's sitting there in jail and he says, You can beat me. You can starve me. But just don't bore me. <laughs> Okay, let's get these out of here, these bolts here that we were using. We don't really want those in there rattling around. They might frown on that if that's just rattling around in there. I don't know if I, oh, I think I did mention it in the video. See, I had, that whole clutch pack rebuild on another SD card in that camera when it got stolen, so we don't have that anymore. So anyway, that being said, uh, I found, because I told you this last on the last SD card, it's gone. See the hole in the exhaust pipe right there? That would be where his noise is coming from. So we found that. Ugh. Huh, kids, we found it. I'd really like to just probably run a couple of these bolts up by hand. Just to make sure she closes the gap. And nothing breaks. Or, you know, nothing binds. And everything sort of turns. I had a Massey Ferguson 2705 one time. 2705 or 2750? Yeah, I think it was 2705. I was just, I was a pretty young mechanic and it was like the third tractor that I'd ever split in two. And uh, I got in a hurry and I tried pulling the cover in that was out like this one initially was, you know, where I had a gap like that and it wouldn't quite go in and I, I pulled it in and I broke the whole housing here and I had to buy that out of my pocket. Stan Barnett. Hmm. I called him and I said, hey Stan, he goes, what's going on? I said, I fucked your tractor up. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? I said, oh, I found another, I found another clutch housing in the trucking yard. I said, it's, I've already bought it and paid for it, it's on its way. Okay, well, thanks for telling me. Uh, yeah. So I learned right then. Just be honest, you know. And...
Okay, who's this? All right, that's a good sign. What is the torque? Probably three eighths bolt, probably 35 foot pounds. There's our old torque limiter disc and I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna give it to the owner, it's his. Say, you know, there really wasn't that, you know, there was nothing really wrong with them, so. Okay. So, 28 to 33 foot pounds. 28 to 33 foot pounds, trouble. And then we'll roll her back together. Let's go to the higher torque spec on this one. There's 30. 33. Let's, uh, let's fold the crane up and shut the pickup off. Okay, that's good enough for now, just in case we need it again. What are you doing, sis? Huh? What are you doing, babe? Such a good girl. Huh, buddy? You know, you guys sure are good buddies. You really are, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things can be going wrong in life, and then you look at these guys, you know, and you go home to the wife and the kids and you go, well, by golly, we ain't doing too bad, huh? We ain't doing too bad, huh? Huh, we ain't doing too bad, partner. What is this thing partially, like, staying on or probably there's a grease in the trigger or something on it? Okay. I know somebody's gonna ask me, how come you back off your torque wrench all the time? This style of torque wrench has a big spring in here, and what you do when you're when you tighten that up, you're compressing that spring. That's how you get your torque. So it's just less wear on the spring if you release it every time and relax the spring. It just makes your torque wrenches stay in calibration longer. Just it's just way easier on things. Okay. Let's check things out and make sure that we're ready for this step. I think we are. Okay, so there we go. With that spline, that spline there, I've got snap rings on the shaft. Um, another thing I forgot to mention in my explanation this morning of the torque limiter, another function. See, this has always got to turn means that you're using this clutch pedal back here to dump your pressure off your valve through your clutch pack 
something has to still turn your hydraulic pump okay so it's the same thing as like a tw20 well tw25 actually i'm wrong on that because a tw25 actually has a mechanical clutch but on this you want so when you push in on the clutch what i'm trying to say when you push in on the clutch on the tractor you don't want your hydraulics to quit you know like an obg pump on a cat you know remember the old bg pumps that used to be on the cat and when you when you push the clutch lever forward you didn't have no hydraulics it only you know you, it had to be engaged so it was turning that pump well on these this thing's always turning and i think also if something seizes up on the pto shaft which is this is the pto kind of a live shaft and then the back on your uh pump or something back there seizes up then this will slip as well without tearing the shit out of everything hey quit what are you doing on trouble you're on the wrong end of him if you're trying to do that look out bud we gotta roll this tractor back together guys okay um we kind of need to go like that so let's go oh i might need to turn my caster wheels i don't know yet what are you doing trouble come on guys go on and the problem is is these stupid asphalt floor if something's heavy enough especially in the summertime the caster wheels will sink into the asphalt and you have a hell of a time trying to get them rolling again this is terrible okay she's kind of got a little bit of guy coming the other sh come in the shop here the other day and he goes god damn you always got a tractor in two don't you i said yeah kind of there's not as many as i used to have here i think i'm gonna have to put a block or something it's kind of wanting to do this and not really <sighs> doing what i want it to do shit here in the way uh. this floor when they pulled all the scud, spud equipment out of here the washing equipment and the boxing equipment it was anchored to the floor and they jackhammered a bunch of it out and there's big low spots in the floor so this thing's kind of in a low spot right here and it's really kind of a being a pain in the ass and if it keeps fighting I'm just gonna go get come alongs and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come along it together. Okay. Make sure you don't pull the back end off the damn stands. We're gonna have to go like that. Which means you need to grab this wheel here and oh like that almost need a block of wood or something because it keeps wanting to roll back downhill on me <sighs> don't really need a railroad tie it'd be nice just to have a little one here maybe i can does that one got any tension on it I'll use this one here we'll stick it right here <sighs> piece of shit okay Yeah, one of these days when I get rich, I'll get me a nice lighted up shop, nice asphalt floor. Okay, we're gaining on her now, I think. Got a big hole in the floor right there. It's all downhill. It's just wonderful. Okay. Uh. Uh. Over 
knife close to getting centered up. I think if we go straight ahead with it, I think. Let's see what we can accomplish here. I think I'm fairly close right there on that. Kind of needs to go like that a little bit. Let's just go. Looking fairly good, I think. I think maybe it'll go straight now. Okay. I hit somewhere and I'm not sure where. Wasn't the shaft. So where did it hit? The starter hit somewhere? I don't really see anything that hit anywhere. It must have hit. That is. This needs to go higher. Okay, that's what happened. What's that doing? I don't know, I think it still needs to go higher. Getting closer. Stay there, you son of a bitch. Okay. He's trying to do something for us. I've got kind of a little gap there, though. So one of them got to come up, and one's got to come down. And I'm thinking we need to go up with this one. Uh, we're already up against the bottom of that. Uh, we're up against the bottom of the, the ring gears up against the bottom of that case. Both of them need to come up. Let's jack, let's just jack this one back up. Let's jack. Let's see a whip against. One. Try to get the gap even. I usually just eyeball it. See how the flywheel, you only got like that much ring gear sticking out the top. You got that much sticking out the bottom. Quite a ways off. Let's see if we can get it squared up. Still need to go some more. Let's jack this one here. Okay. Sure looks fairly even now. Yeah, about the same amount of ring gear sticking out at the top as I do at the bottom and the dowels look fairly lined up I've had them to where you thought everything was lined up and you fought them for 
30 minutes an hour trying to get them splined together and wiggling and shaking and messing around with them and now we might be into where we need to spline something now what size is that um, that's looking like maybe inch and a half Their serpentine belt from a service truck. I'm an inch and a half, and an inch and a half, inch and three quarter. I know I own an inch and a half. Inch and a half right there. Let's, uh, let's put a little tension on it with the come along. See if it does anything for us. That way, maybe we can get a little bit of tension on the splines there. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. I'm going to have to rehook my come along somewhere. <laughs> It may not work out. I don't think it's going to. I'm going to run out of... Huh? Put a little tension on it like that. And then let's see if we can turn that and spline it up maybe. If we get lucky enough to do it. Okay, she kind of... shook a little bit on me there and I'm out of come along really so did we do anything or what let's see if we can take the come along loose maybe and well do we have any more pull on it we do Everything's still, nothing's really binding anywhere. We need to come up a little bit more so our dowel's not quite lined up where we need to be there. That's what's nice about this splitting stand is you can level it out where you want it. If your wedges are a little bit off, this side's a little high, see? Now it's just right. Now, she should just kind of slide together. Yeah, there she goes. <clears throat> yeah, I just gotta get a couple bolts in it and pull her to, it's like that and she's together pretty much. Let's go with a couple of these smaller bolts, a couple half inch bolts, put them right up here in the top. Always make sure you don't get a wire that fell down in there. Pinch it in the in between. Find me a three-quarter socket in my junk. That is 13 sixteenths and that mismatch set of shit. Here, okay, reach drive ratchet. I need an in wrench 
much, don't I? Yep, I need an in-wrench for that. That ain't working worth the shit. Little log truck thing kind of put a damper on my plans for the day. That's for damn sure. But, oh well, they paid on the spot, so nice to have some quick paying cash on the deal. You know, if it feels really tight and the gap's not closing up and you're really get reefing on it, just stop. Don't keep reefing on it. Common sense, man. Common sense ain't so common anymore, though, with some folks. Whew, okay, I need an inch and five sixteenths. If I remember right, that's what size those were. Inch and three sixteenths. Pretty sure they were inch and five sixteenths. And then a three quarter inch wrench so I can tighten the other one up on the top. This is another one I'm kind of excited to get together because this guy is a very good customer and pays his bills. He won't, he's one of those guys that he gets pissed off if you don't pay him or if you don't bill him immediately. He won't pick the tractor up. He'll say, No, you get me a bill. I've been busy in the summertime before and I said, oh fuck Keith, I'll just I'll settle up with you later. No, no, you you get a bill. I don't you don't need to be living off I don't need to be living off your money. He's a good dude. Really is. Very rare these days is what it is. Everybody else wants to wait make you wait a month and bill yeah, just bill me and then that type of shit, you know. He's a good man. Let's uh, get, there's two long ones and two short ones and I don't remember what went where. To be honest, I think the short ones were right here on the bottom. The long ones are in the middle. Yeah, the long ones were in the middle. Why are you not starting? Why are you doing this to me? No reason that shouldn't start in there. How can it be that far off? I don't understand that. What in the world? Why, how can the dowels be lined up and all that be lined up and that be off that far? What moved? Oh, I see. The frame has moved on this separator hole oh, on this plate back here. Ah, that is really dicked up. So I wonder if I let off on this, let off on the other one, and that line that back up. Where's my lineup bar at? pretty close. It's closer than it was. Yeah, let's see if we can get it lined up. There we go. touch kind of a little pain in the ass I 
I see. I wonder if I need to pull my split and stand completely out. It's got like it. It's got like a tweak or something. A little bit. I got them two half inch bolts in the top. So those are good to go. How about the bottom ones? Can we get those in? And then we could probably pull our stand out of it and release that little bit of tweak that it's got on it. Yeah. We've got a lot of thread in there. It'll be fine. Might have to relax the top two bolts to get it to come where it needs to be. All right, guys, let me get my splitting stand out from under this thing, and then I think I'll be golden. Okay, got that one started. Short one here, hopefully it cooperates. Yes, now it's like I got the splitting stand. Splitting stand was just putting a little tension on it. Kind of nice if they got those little half inch bolts that go in there and you can get those in. See the half inch bolts, they lined right up. Oh, because the half inch bolts aren't. See the frame of the tractor is going through this, uh, this piece of metal, then there's the plate, what I call the rear structure. Goes through the rear structure and then goes to the transmission, so. That is why the half inch bolts just go through the plate right into the transmission, so they line right up. <clears throat> no, that one's not starting, so we got a little work to do there. That one's starting though. Why are you not starting? One starts, the other one you would think would start, so I know that one starts, so let's get our bar. Whatever in the hell I did with it. And then I'll get my three quarter Impact. I can be able to get in there with the filters right there in the way. And I don't know. Actually, it's trying to start right there. We got it. All right. Now watch the top one not start. That's usually how it goes. All right, let's kick this thing in the ass and tighten them up. And hopefully everything works out right. Whew. I've got to find an inch and five sixteenths. flashlight all right so we got an inch and five sixteenths get these cinched up Gotta look up the torques for these well they were tighter than shit when I pulled them off the antifreeze coming from oh, right here where I took the manual gauge sending unit out that he had scabbed in there so that goes right there let's go ahead and plug that ridiculous hole off I gotta 
weld up that exhaust. Got some nickel rod in there. I'll have to clean that up. That's not starting in there straight. Come on now. Of course that's... Okay. Alright guys. I gotta look up the torque specs for these. And tighten all these half inch bolts. And then... Shit man. We're gaining on her. Hopefully everything goes okay. Alright guys. So the spec is 380. 420. So I'm gonna go to 400. Four hundred foot pounds. You gotta make sure that you're doing this right. I mean, one side's got a hole, but you can go counterclockwise with these torque wrenches and counter and clockwise. Make sure you go with CW for clockwise. Okay. Uh, this light's gonna be in the way a little bit here. Done with the big torque wrench. Now, uh, small bolts are 80 foot pounds, half inch bolts. Something's getting loose on my. Pocket knife. Oh, this torch head. I need to tighten that up. You don't have to back these split booms off, but I just do. It's just a, just a habit. It's an old habit. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna torque those, and then uh, uh, I'm trying to decide whether I should video, I don't know, I'm basically just gonna put the hoses on and the battery box back on and the wiring, and we'll start it. Pour oil in it, he's got all new filters, and he's got some oil jugs, and pour oil in it, and go drive it. I gotta do something with this. I don't know, man. Uh, It always has to be on the bottom. Can't ever be on the side right here. Somewhere where a guy can get to it real easy. I might be able to take my dying grinder with the carbide burr and clean that up. I don't know if I can take some 718 maybe. Nickel rod would work really good on it. It's a 99 nickel and then I could preheat it and get it cherry red. There's a gasket in here though. I, know, I don't know if it's a metal impregnated gasket or if is it a. This should be a metal. It's kind of just flaking off, though. I don't know. It's going to get hot welding on anyway. I think we'll take our chances and I think we'll. We'll try some 7018 and try to goober it in there and see if we can get it to hold and stick to that. I don't know if we got cast iron or cast steel. I always take a. Let's see cast iron okay I don't think a magnet will stick to cast iron will it 
Eh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody out there is the purveyor of all great fucking knowledge, so... Um, I know that I usually take a grinder, and usually on cast steel you can see quite a few sparks coming off. On cast iron you really don't see much spark. So, I'm thinking we got cast steel. I don't know, we'll see. Cast iron, I really like using 99 nickel. Well guys, uh, it's about 7 o'clock at night. Uh, got a long ways, long ways today. I, I would have had it done if the log truck wouldn't have came up, but that's okay. We got paid for it on the spot. That's, that's a good deal. We can't complain about that. <clears throat> I've got pretty much fuel shut off, uh, fuel throttle cable, alternator hooked up. Uh, well, I thought I had the alternator hooked up. That wire's not on. Anyway, uh, steering lines, cooler lines hooked up. Got the battery tray on. <sighs> got the fuel tank over here back in it. I gotta pour some fuel in it. Uh, I gotta put the battery positive uh, wire on here. And then I gotta change all the filters and uh, pour the oil in it and start it. Get it bled out and get started. So I'm gonna do that early in the morning. I gotta leave early. I'm, my plan is to get down here early in the morning and um, you know start getting things get it going and uh, get that exhaust fixed the hole in it and then my plan is to get my ass back to Klamath crane the rails and bolt kit back in the, the service truck and then haul ass to Lando Valley and start putting that 690B back together so we've got parts it's time to it's time to get after it and get her done now so all right guys thanks for watching i'll be back the next video and hopefully this thing will be driving around and everything will be good to go